the former governor of Vermont. He's also a CNBC contributor. Our guest host this hour is Senator Pat Toomey and uh, Governor Dean, good morning. Good morning. We were just talking with Senator Carper and Senator Toomey, Senator Carper were kind of throwing each other bones back and forth saying we can all work together, great idea. What do you think? I think it would be nice, but uh, I, you know, I think it's, it hasn't happened much, but it would be nice if that could happen. I think that's a good thing. Although you think that the fiscal cliff coming up, you're convinced that we need to fall over it in order to I do. actually be I, I do, to take actually. action? It's a, it's a drastic bipartisan solution. The, the tax rates go back to where they were when Bill Clinton was president, and we cut the living daylights out of a lot of things that haven't been cut before. They're unpalatable solutions to most people in Washington, which probably means they make sense. Here's why I, here's why I think this. Um, I don't think they're going to strike at any kind of a reasonable deal, because they haven't been able to do that for quite some time. But this would really, and the, and the Congressional Budget Office says we would go into recession for two quarters, and then we would be out of recession and the, um, the growth rate for the year would be 2.3%. That's a tough price to pay. Maybe 700,000 people would lose their jobs. That is a tough price to pay. But what you get out of it is the deficit problem is significantly altered. I think it's something like $7.5 trillion out of the deficit. That's a big deal. We need to deal with this deficit. It is a huge problem. People are, uh, this country is not going to be like Greece, but it's going to be a continuingly difficult problem. I happen to think the overhang of the deficit is one of the biggest economic draggers that we face. So uh, I think we ought to do it. I think let's just go over the fiscal cliff. Uh, let's all, everybody's going to bite the bullet. The Republicans are going to hate the taxes and the, uh, and the Democrats are going to I hate some of this, uh, the uh, the cuts, but it's going to have to happen. Senator, any chance we could get a deal done without a gun at our head? Um, unlikely at this point, I think. But I have to strongly disagree with uh, Governor Dean. Um, I don't think the answer for our economy right now is a massive tax increase, and that's what the Democrats who are suggesting we go over the cliff. Well, the you know CBO can make estimates about how bad that recession is going to be. Could end up being a lot worse than that. And frankly, we don't have a tax problem. The current tax regime that's been in place for 12 years now, as recently as 2007, we had a deficit that was only 1.2 percent of GDP. Yeah, but if you the look problem at taxes, is, I mean, we're bringing in 16 percent of sure, GDP. Sure, you have you an economic slowdown. When you have an economic slowdown, that always happens. And then, if we could ever well, we have a recovery, back. right? Because of what we're doing in Washington, a 2007, you could argue that a lot of that was based on false profits, on false. Six, okay, you can argue a, li back. a little bit, but but come on, 1.2 percent of GDP is a trivial no, size deficit. 16 percent of where the deficits. Was. Here's the thing. Here, here's what everybody who's looked at it, including. That's the president fact. of the United States has acknowledged the problem we have is entitlement spending. No big program can grow faster than the economy Granted, indefinitely. That is, the, that is the biggest but, problem. But That's half not, of our budget is, is right. growing faster than the economy, much of it much faster. <laughs> Social Security, Pat. Medicare, Medicaid, all of them. That's unsustainable. No, That's the Pat, problem. You can't, you, you're making the case that you, got, you can't, cut ta you can't uh, increase taxes because we're in a recession. That's why spending is down. Well, that's why entitlement spending is up. This is a silly conversation. No. Oh, Look, Social Security is up because minute, of the just tax rates? Excuse Come me. On. Let me just finish what I had to say, if you don't mind. The CBO projects that 60 percent of the deficit in 2019 is going to be solely the Bush tax cuts, not the unfunded wars, uh, not the entitlement spending, solely the Bush tax Simpson cuts accounts for 60 percent. They Erskine were not Bowles paid for. You. Erskine Bowles will tell you that the biggest problem that we have is health care and that that is Absolutely. going to climb to 22 percent of, of our spending, of our GDP, 22 percent of our GDP this year. The second biggest is defense. A absolutely. Here, here's a fact that I think is very, very compelling. If you take three categories of federal spending, the Social Security program, mandatory health care and interest on our debt within this 10-year budget window that is projected to consume over 90 percent of all the revenue that we've historically ever been able to collect uh, that's completely unsustainable. We've got to fix the broken entitlement but programs Senator, to, to put us on a sustainable we don't have a path. Problem is well, look, to say the, the, that there the, is we no do have a, that we have a big tax problem. No, we no those paying, are two the tax rates things. we were those paying at the end things, of Bill Becky. Clinton's presidency were, were had us in the black. The so last time we were in the black was when Bill Clinton was president, and one of the reasons was we had a reasonable tax structure. Here's the the fact of the matter is this is exactly why there's not going to be a bipartisan. If you think we're going to uh, agreement, if you think the Democrats are going to agree to cuts in Medicare and Social Security, while millionaires are getting big, huge tax breaks. That's insane. Well, well, Everybody's <laughs> going to have to put some skin in this game. Everybody's this deficit was caused by all of us, and we're all going to have to put something in the in the in the pot to fix this. And that includes tax increases and spending. And the de I am, as a Democrat, am willing to make the kinds of spending cuts that we need. But P Senator Toomey, and the, as a Republican, is going to have to be willing to agree to some tax well, increases. I, first Otherwise, of all, we I offered a comprehensive budget that solves this do. problem and a proposal in the super committee 
committee that was a major series of concessions, including new revenue, but the Democrats wouldn't go along. We have Would a Democrat. With that plan, though, I offered the plan. Yeah. I'm the one who offered the plan. It was oh, tax sorry, reform. Is... It generated mm -hmm. revenue. It made the revenue would have come from the top income brackets. And, 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 and asked for some modest spending reductions, and the Democrats walked away. The fact is, the Democrats control the Senate. We're going three consecutive years we without do not a control budget the resolution. We the do Democrats not control don't control the Senate. You, guys you certainly have filibustered do. Everything and, we tried and, to do. and not only that, what is, name any Democrat other than Ron Wyden, who deserves a lot of credit who's proposed any reforms for any of the entitlement programs. It's deathly silence coming from that side. While Republicans have offered budget resolutions that have been passed in the House, multiple budget resolutions in the Senate, well, a proposal the in the Super Committee. Who has offered to well, anyway, I think, I think and, we're making And it's my not point because here. it's economically necessary. It's an effort to try to get the other side to come and do something well, on the entitlement side. Two sides look at side. it very differently think, about what the problem is. Yeah, I solutions. think we're making the point here is that we are going to go over the fiscal cliff, and I think that's a good thing. I think it's going to, it's I the think only it's a way bad we can. Thing. Governor well, Dean. I know you do. But we're, this is what's going to solve the deficit problem. Nobody's seriously talking about solving the deficit problem in any kind of a cooperative way in Washington. That's uh, what the fiscal cliff is for. Except there are increasing numbers of Democratic senators who don't want to do what the leadership wants to do, which is go over the cliff and cause a great recession. And, and I think we could very well, before this election, get to the point where we've got a majority Tre in the Senate. Treasury Secretary Tim Geithner said last week uh, at the CNBC uh, Delivering Alpha conference, he thinks it's a ridiculous way to try and deal with serious problems, the idea of going over the fiscal cliff in order to actually deal with things. Is there a way to get the adults back in charge? I, I don't hear a way to, this morning on this program. I think I think you need to have some. This is this is the right way to do it. I mean, there's no. This is not the right way to do it. But this is the only way it's going to get done. As I said before, you're not going to cut all the entitlement programs that middle class people depend on while you're giving people that make a gazillion dollars a year the, these huge tax breaks. President it's not going to happen. President Obama said in 2010 when he extended for another two years the current rates that you don't raise taxes at a time like that because the economy was too weak. The economy, the economy is weaker economy now. No, the it's not. Of course it is. Now. We have less that than two percent GDP now. growth. We have no, miserable job not creation. It's not that is correct. not correct. We, we, have a, we still have. We continue to have positive job creation. We, we've created four and a half million it, private sector jobs since Howard, this president's been in office. Howard, we've got a tremendously weak fact. economy right now. Roger we Altman, not. who I fired that last time I checked this from your side, acknowledges that what looks like improvement in the employment numbers simply comes from a reduction in the workforce participation rate. People are giving up, Howard. No, that's, it's just not so. Our, our economy is getting stronger. It's maybe may not going fast, be fast enough, but by every measure, our economy is getting stronger. Unemployment stronger on a relative basis though. to what? On the basis of job creation, simply job creation and falling unemployment numbers. We've averaged 75,000 new jobs a month for the last three months. That's not even enough to absorb the new entrants in the workforce, Howard. That's, this is, that's not, that, those yes, are facts. Yeah. Those are the numbers. Six, it's terrible. 60, 000, excuse me, but 60,000, what we're actually seeing is 60,000 uh, job cuts in the public sector, which the Republicans are, seem to be applauding, at least the candidate, Republican presidential candidate does, and then 135 to 140,000 jobs have increased. Look, I'll, we'll agree that that's not enough, mm -hmm. but it's... We're going in the right direction, and I think that's important. I, I, and I, I, we're I, if we're we decelerating take, look, in a very dangerous way. Let's, let's, let's just disagree. Let's just agree to disagree about the means of dealing with the deficit. I can't believe you wouldn't. You and I both wouldn't agree that it'd be a great thing to take seven and a half trillion dollars out of the deficit. Now we got to agree on that. What we're disagreeing on is on how we're going to do it. And a bargain was made a year ago to put this off, and I think it's time to stop putting it off and get it done. One way or another, there is probably going to be something that forces this issue. It, but uh, it's going to be an election. Governor, Governor Dean, thank you very much for joining us today. Senator Toomey is going to stay with us for the rest of the hour.